Snowflakes danced around in the sky, it was like ice white dust, blending in with the trees that were already covered in snow from last night. It was that time of year when Yukiana the snow woman came to steal children from their warm homes and eat them. In the distance, Haru could hear the piercing sounds of women crying throughout the streets of Chichibu, Japan. For as long as Haru remembered, Yukiana would take a boy and a girl to feast on, this would happen once every year on the night of the first snowfall. Haru slid open the shoji and made his way down the hallway, he could feel a chill run down his spine when he reached the dark living room where his parents were. He looked around the room and his brother, Jiro, was nowhere to be found. Before his mother could even utter a sound, he knew what she was going to say. He's gone, his mother managed to say while bursting out into tears. Haru began to cry, and he could feel the tears roll down his cheek, he knew that this was coming sooner or later. Jiro was only six, a perfect victim for the snow woman. Don't worry cousin, I'll find Jiro, I'll bring him back, Haru vowed to his parents. Haru made his way to Sonk 3's house in hopes to get a blessing. Sonk 3. Haru called out in front of the village leader's door, Sonk 3. Haru yelled out again, louder this time. Sonk 3 brought Haru into his house, and while sipping green tea, Haru explained the whole story and his vow to his parents. After listening, Sonk 3 closed his eyes as if he was communicating with the gods above. After a while he opened his eyes, now blowing like gold and said, You are the chosen one by Hachiman, god of war, you have his blessing to defeat Yukiana. Go to the temple down the river, you will see a red tree, you will know what to do then. But before Haru left, Sonk 3 gave him one of his most prized possessions, the O Katana, to Haru as a blessing. When Haru reached the red, crimson tree, he touched the bark with his bare hands and felt a pull, like the tree was pulling him into it. He felt dizzy, fighting the urge to close his eyes, he dug his nails into his sweaty palms, stopping himself from falling asleep. Seems like you are a brave one, you didn't fall asleep like the other humans, echoed a voice. In a split second, Haru was brought into another world, there were no people, no one in sight. The thick snow on the ground betrayed no footprints, Haru didn't know where to go, or what to do, but one thing he knew for certain, was that he needed to kill Yukiana. He looked around and saw a shed, but before Haru could even open the shed's door, there was a strong gust of wind. Ahahaha, seems like you found me little one, the snow woman said with a wicked grin on her face. Without hesitation, Haru pulled out the O Katana from behind his back, and swung it in the air, aiming for Yukiana. He missed by an inch, making the snow women furious. She stretched out her long arms and long fingernails. She threw her arms in the air, the long fingernails slashed Haru's left cheek leaving an unforgettable scar. Red liquid ran down his cheek, blood, it dipped slowly onto the white snow, melting it in the process. He wasn't going to back down, with the help of Hachiman's power, he swung his sword again, this time piercing his long sword right through the snow woman's stomach, leaving her bleeding on the white snow. Haru finally opened the shed and saw two children, a boy and a girl. Jiro. Haru yelled in joy as he hugged his brother tightly, not wanting to let go. The three of them were excited and so glad that after hundreds of years, this was finally going to end. They were eager to let the village people know about their victory? But little did they know what was going to happen. Haru brought the two children back to the village and everyone cheered and was delighted by the news. Glimmering rays of orange shined throughout the sky and children were now safe without the threat of the snow woman. A snowflake flew from the sky into Haru's mouth, it tasted sweet, he turned back to his family, and they walked happily back home, safe and united. A few more years later and Haru had his own family, his own children, and a warm cozy home. He was different now, after the fight with Yukiana, he was a completely different person, he started having nightmares and horrible dreams, that one day, she will return. But sometimes, nightmares become reality? Although he seemed happy on the outside he knew what was going to happen. What's wrong honey? Haru's wife, Ichika said in a conursing soft voice. It's nothing, just those horrible nightmares again? Haru replied, looking down, ashamed to admit to his wife. Both of them knew that it wasn't really that simple, common, the same nightmares for years? Both of them knew what was going to happen, 
so they decided to ask a Tenjinjutsu to see what was going to happen. They bowed their heads when they saw the Tenjinjutsu and told her what was in Haru's nightmare for the past years. But before Haru could explain the details, the Tenjinjutsu slammed the door shut, so hard it almost knocked both of them to the ground, as if she saw a ghost. Both of them didn't know what was going on, why was the Tenjin Justice so scared to see them, there were a million questions swimming around their heads like fishes in water. The couple deserved answers. They were going to knock on the door of the Tenjin Justice's house but stopped. Wait, stop, I am here to help. Sunk three screamed from behind the couple, we were confused. Remember me? Sunk three asked Haru while taking in huge gasps for air. You? You're Sunk three. I remember you gave me a sword to fight the snow woman. Haru started to say as he was remembering the past. Sunk three brought them back to his house, and while sipping tea the young couple explained to Sunk three about the nightmares. But Sunk three seemed to know about everything, he knew about where the young couple were, why they went to the Tenjinjutsu house and why they were sighting in front of him. What I'm about to tell you, should never leave this room. Sunk three began saying to the couple. Sunk three looked into Haru's eyes, took him another sip of tea Nat continued, the dreams you are having will become reality, but you can stop it from happening, leave this village with your young children and never return. When Haru and Ichika got home, they went straight to their rooms and packed up their things, along with their children's thing. When night fell and only the cricket's crip was heard singing. The stray cats roomed the streets and the lights turned off in the neighboring houses. We are leaving tonight, and you all will remain quiet. Haru said to his family in a near whisper. But Ichika and her children were confused as to why they had to leave at night, and why did had to leave quietly. Ichika knew about what the Sunk Three said but was still bewildered. But slowly on the cart ride to their new house, she drifted off to a deep sleep. When she awoke she found herself in a familiar place. It was Haru's former house, the one he lived in as a child, still in the same city. Didn't Sunk Three warn us to leave, why are we still here? Ichika asked her husband in shock. But Haru knew what he was doing, when Sunk Three invited them to his house, Haru saw the black magic spells on the wall that Sunk Three forgot to hide. Haru knew that the dreams he'd been having and were all done by Sunk Three. He wanted Haru the brave warrior to leave the city, so Sunk Three could rule it once again. That's why Haru stayed close to watch. As the day went on, Haru sat there observing his own house through the window. He saw Sunk Three and his guards walking in and out of his house. A few weeks later when Sunk Three knew for sure that Haru was gone, he began to play his chess and make the citizens obey his command. He forced everyone in every house to wear armor and carry weapons. Sunk Three wanted to rule Japan. But Haru didn't know this, because was hiding in the small attic with his family. But when noise disturbed th peaceful family in their sleep, he knew that war is on. He brought out the sword that Sunk Three gave him a long time ago, and used the same sword to fight Sunk Three. Even though Haru didn't want to fight Sunk Three, his village leader, he knew this had to be done. He knew that in order to protect his villagers and his family, he had to win this fight. And he did, with his magical sword, swinging back and forth, Sunk Three fell to the ground yelling, Stop, I surrender. Then Haru brought Sunk Three into an interrogation room to ask him questions, regarding the black magic and all that has happened so far. What Sunk Three said shocked Haru, and everyone. When Haru was born, the Tenjinjutsu had said that he was going to accomplish great things and become a ruler but I wasn't going to allow that so when Haru was twelve I sent him with my broken sword to fight the snow woman. Thinking he was going to die in battle made Emmy happy, but after he returned I was petrified. I know that sooner or later he would rule over this village or greater. So I started using black magic to create nightmares for Haru wishing he would end his life, but he didn't. So I came up with a better plan to make him leave and he didn't? He stayed. Sunk Three explained the truth while crying. Haru saved the village once again. Soon he became the village leader, and you know him, he's just around the corner, protecting us from harm.